Hello everyone, today we are going to cover uh, prefixes. Once again, we're using uh, Davy Allen Chabner's medical terminology, uh, the short course. We're using the uh, eighth edition for uh, this lecture. So our learning objectives are to identify and to define common prefixes that are used in uh, medical terms. We're gonna learn to analyze, spell, and pronounce medical terms that contain prefixes. Now, once again, prefixes are what become or what come before the word root, as opposed to the suffixes which come at the end of the uh, word root. So let's talk about some common uh, prefixes. Uh, we've got a or an, which means no, not, or without. We've got ab, which means away from, and ad, which means toward or near. And I think of like abduction uh, if I abduct I, I, I take away um, as opposed to add like if I add something I bring it together like if I take two numbers I add them together so we've got ab which means away from and add which means toward or near so think of abduction if I take my arm and I move my arm outward I'm abducting it, and if I have adduction, I'm bringing my arm back down toward my body. <clears throat> Anna. Anna means up or apart, and anti means before or forward. Anti or anti means against, uh, like an antibiotic, for example. Uh, antibiotics uh, are against bacteria. We use antibiotics to kill bacteria. Uh, bi means two or both. Brady means slow, like think of bradycardia, uh, a slow heartbeat. Uh, con means with or together. Dia means complete or through. This means bad, painful, difficult, abnormal, like dyspnea. If I'm having dyspnea, I'm having difficulty breathing. Ek means out or outside. Endo means within, in, inner. Epi means above or upon. Ex means out and extra means outside of. Half mean or half uh, the prefix is hemi. Hyper means excessive, too much, above, as opposed to hypo, which means deficient, too little, or below. So, like we can think of uh, hyperglycemia, uh, too much sugar in your blood, as opposed to hypoglycemia, not enough sugar in the blood. In means in or into, inter, between, intra, within, mal means bad, and meta means change or beyond. <clears throat> neo, neo means new, uh, like a neonate, a newborn. Uh, para or para means beside, near, alongside of. Peri means surrounding, like the pericardial sac, the sac that surrounds the heart. And poly means uh, many or much. Post. Post means after or behind. Pre means before. Pro also means before, but also forward. And pros means before and forward as well. Quadri. Quadri means four. Re means back or behind. Retro means back or behind. Sub means under or less than. And sin means with or together. I think of like a symphony, uh, a group of uh, instruments all playing together. 
Tachy means fast, like tachycardia, uh, as opposed to bradycardia. Bradycardia was a slow heartbeat. Tachycardia is a rapid heartbeat. Remember, tachycardia is greater than 100 beats per minute. Uh, trans, across or through. Tri is three. Ultra, beyond. And uni means one. So if we think of our numbers, we got uni, one, uh, by was two, tri is three, and quadri is four. The book also talks about some uh, additional medical terms. So we've got the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands are endocrine glands, and they're located right up on top of the kidney, so located above each kidney. I mentioned antibiotic. Uh, remember, anti means uh, against, right? So antibiotics destroy or inhibit the growth of microorganisms such as bacteria. The term antigen. Antigen is a foreign substance such as a bacteria uh, or a virus, for example. Uh, the antigens are the bad guys. Uh, in our bodies, we, we, we get antigens into us, and then we create what are called antibodies, which are the good guys. Here's the term again, bradycardia. Remember, bradycardia means a slow heartbeat. A congenital anomaly. So congenital means that you're born with it. So it's an irregularity. This is where we get the term anomaly in a structure or organ uh, that an infant is born with. So if you have a congenital anomaly, it's some type of a, a defect and irregularity that you are born with. Dialysis is the removing of harmful waste products from the body uh, with an artificial uh, machine, kidney machine. This is called a dialysis machine. It's when your kidneys uh, aren't working anymore, we need to rid our body of the toxins and we're put on dialysis. An ectopic pregnancy. An abnormal pregnancy when the embryo implants outside of the uterus, usually in the fallopian tubes, but sometimes on an ovary or in, in, abdom in the abdominal cavity. So an ectopic pregnancy is in an emergency condition. Uh, obviously, if there's a fertilization occurring, uh, the egg becomes fertilized within the fallopian tube. It should then uh, move and implant itself, the fertilized egg, into the uh, uterus, the uterine wall. Um, if it remains in the uh, fallopian tube, however, and then it would start to grow, it would rupture that fallopian tube. So uh, it's emer an emergency condition that needs to be uh, rectified. Your parathyroid glands, four endocrine glands located on the dorsal side uh, of the thyroid gland that functions separately from the thyroid gland. Uh, prolapse, to fall or slide forward. Uh, usually describing an organ. So you can have um, you know, things that fall out of place, like a prolapsed uterus, it, it mentions here, uh, a prolapsed rectum, for example. It slides or moves out of its normal position. We've got retroperitoneal. So remember, we learned retro was behind or back, right? So pertaining to behind the peritoneum, remember the peritoneum is that uh, tissue covering for the organs within the abdomen. Um, most of the organs within the abdominal cavity are uh, within the peritoneum. However, your kidneys and the adrenal glands are behind it. So we say that these are retroperitoneal structures. When I think of a, a syndrome, I think of a, a group of symptoms. Okay, so a syndrome, a group of signs or symptoms that commonly occur together and indicate a particular disease or an abnormal uh, condition. Okay, we'll talk about syndromes um, when uh, we talk about radiobiology, for example, and the different syndromes that can occur when high amounts of radiation are imparted to the body. Subcutaneous, remember sub means under, right? So it's the lower layer of the skin composed of fatty tissue. Tachycardia, as I mentioned, condition of fast or rapid heartbeat. Transurethra, remember trans means across. Uh, your urethra is the tube between your bladder to the exterior. Uh, and that's, uh, we want to keep these terms in mind. We got urethra, which is the term 
from uh, for the tube that goes from the bladder to the exterior versus the ureters, which are tubes that are going from your kidneys to your bladder. Ultrasonography, a diagnostic technique that uses ultrasound waves to produce a diagnostic image or a photograph of an organ um, or tissue. That brings us to some uh, medical uh, scramble words. So let's think about this, and, and here are the clues to try and help you out in uh, deciphering what these could be. So if something's harmless or not cancerous, so if I think about the term for cancerous, I know cancerous means, uh, the term's malignant. Uh, the opposite of malignant, can you guess? Benign, okay. B-E-N-I-G-N, -E benign. Painful urination, okay. So to the term for urination, urea, uh, do you remember painful? Dis. So we've got dysuria, dysuria, D-Y-S-U-R-I-A, uh, pertaining to a newborn. So pertaining to, we're going to think of that uh, suffix A-L, right? So uh, new, neo, so neonatal, neonatal. SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome. Okay, basically, what happens with this is that the, the baby simply stops breathing. Um, this term would be then apnea. Okay? And it, it doesn't have to just apply to, uh, to this condition or syndrome. Remember, it's a collection of things that leads to this. Um, but, you know, people have sleep apnea, and then they have to wear, for example, uh, CPAP machines or masks. Uh, number five, when an organ shrinks in size. When an organ shrinks in size, we use the term atrophy. Okay, atrophy. A-T-R-O-P-H-Y, atrophy. Let's look at this bonus term here, a foreign protein that causes an immune response. The hint, this protein is often part of bacteria, viruses, and it evokes that production of antibodies. So if you remember, I said the antibodies were the good guys and the bad guys are the antigen. A-N-T-I-G-E-N, antigen. All right, so at this point, I want to take a little bit of time to uh, look in your uh, textbook. Once again, we're using uh, Davy and Ellen Chabner's Medical Terminology Short Course, the 8th edition. If we look on page uh, 130, so there are the uh, common forms uh, that we've uh, talked about just now, these prefixes. Uh, on the uh, next page are the uh, common combining suffixes there. Okay, and these we've already talked about. So uh, just to look uh, those over. I'd like to look at the bottom of page 132. Here we've got the term anemia. And I just want to note that there are different types of anemia. Uh, listed there. So you've got something called aplastic anemia, uh, the bone marrow is failing to produce uh, red cells, uh, white cells, and clotting cells. Hemolytic anemia, so lysis means to break down. So blood cell, uh, red blood cells are destroyed, bone marrow cannot compensate for the loss. You can get iron deficiency anemia, which is just that. You've got low iron levels that lead to low hemoglobin concentrations. Pernicious anemia. Uh, mucous membrane of the stomach fails to produce a substance called the intrinsic factor uh, that's necessary for the absorption of vitamin B12 uh, and the proper formation of uh, RBCs. And then our last one that's here is sickle cell anemia. And we get this term because normally the red blood cell is uh, circular and it's biconcave. With sickle cell anemia, the cells uh, are distorted in shape, and they, and they look like a sickle, basically. So uh, erythrocytes assume an abnormal crescent or sickle shape. Uh, it's due to the inherence of an abnormal type of hemoglobin. Uh, sickle cell can cause all kinds of problems because what happens is that the cells tend to then clump together, and they can cause clots, which then block blood vessels. At the top of 133, we've got the adrenal glands pictured. So once again, we've got the kidneys, 
You've got, as I mentioned, the two tubes that go from the kidneys down to the bladder, which are your ureters, and then you've got the bladder. Uh, what's not pictured there then would be the tube that's uh, leading to the exterior, which remember from the bladder to the exterior is the urethra. Uh, but sitting right up on top of the kidneys then are the adrenal glands. At the bottom of page 133, um, it talks about a urinalysis, and, and probably all of us have had a urinalysis at some point in time. We give a urine sample, and then they take a look at the urine. Um, what are they looking for? Well, these are some things. Uh, they're looking for the color, okay? And you can see uh, normal urine has a light yellow color. Certainly, if it's red, that's we call this hematuria, which is blood that would be in the urine. They look for clarity. You should have nice, clear urine. If it's cloudy, cloudy urine generally uh, indicates that there is an infectious uh, process going on. <clears throat> Excuse me, the pH uh, should be slightly acidic. So normal urine is slightly acidic. Um, abnormal then would be the opposite, which would be alkaline, which once again would indicate there's probably an infection going on. Uh, protein, there should be very slight amounts of protein in your urine. You don't want protein in your urine. If you do, you have something called proteinuria, uh, which could indicate then you've got some renal disease going on. Remember, renal means uh, the kidney. And sugar. Uh, we don't want any sugar in your urine. Okay, If you've got sugar in your urine, you have what's called glycosuria, which uh, could indicate uh, that you've got diabetes. On page 134, there's pictured... Uh, uh, web toes, and I want you just to know that the term for the webbing of toes is called syndactyly. At the top of 135, it's showing you a picture of an ectopic pregnancy. So once again, um, when fertilization takes place, it generally takes place in the fallopian tube. So you've got the egg moving from the ovary, uh, the sperm then are going to swim up into the uh, fallopian tube. Uh, fertilization is going to take place, and then that fertilized egg then should move uh, to the lining, the inner lining of the uterus to implant itself. If the fertilized egg remains in the fallopian tube, uh, here we've got then the ectopic uh, pregnancy. Just to look at this drawing again, so you can see that uh, that white structure that's drawn there, that's the ovary, and then you've got the fallopian tube, and then you've got these finger-like uh, projections, which are called fimbri, which actually then uh, kind of catch the egg as it's released and move it into the fallopian tube. At the bottom of 135, uh, these are some common um, uh, terms that students sometimes uh, mix up. Okay, we've got plasia, plagia, and plasia. Okay, so they almost kind of sound the same. So it says don't confuse these very different suffixes. We've got plasia, which means formation. Phagia, which means swallowing, and then we've got phasia, which means speech. So I always uh, remember the one with the S, the phasia, phasia uh, is uh, speech versus phagia, which is to swallow. On 136, uh, talks about some types of endoscopy procedures. Endoscopy is going to be involving taking a scope uh, to move into the body. You can do arthroscopy, which is going to look at the joints, uh, bronchoscopy, uh, which is going to look at the bronchi, uh, a colonoscopy, a tube is inserted, they're going to look at the colon, a uh, cystoscopy is going to take a look at the bladder, uh, esophageal uh, gastroscopy, uh, esophagus and stomach, uh, hysteroscopy, they're going to look at the uterus, laparoscopy, visualization of the abdomen, mediastinoscopy, uh, visualization of the mediastinum, which remember is that area in the middle of the chest, and sigmoidoscopy, uh, visualization uh, or examination of the sigmoid colon. Table 4.3 talks about major endocrine glands, selected hormones. We've got the adrenal glands giving off what's called adrenaline or epinephrine. We've got our ovaries, which give off estrogen and progesterone. The pancreas gives off what's called insulin. Of course, insulin is used to break down sugar. The parathyroid glands, that give off parathyroid hormone. 
Uh, your pituitary gland, a really important uh, gland, little gland, but very important, gives off a lot of uh, very important hormones, ACTH, FSH, uh, GH, TSH. Uh, you'll learn more about that in your anatomy and physiology course when they talk about all of the different uh, hormones. Uh, the testes give off uh, testosterone, and your thyroid gl gland gives off thyroxin, which is T4. On top of 137, figure 4.4 talks about an epidural and a subdural hematoma. So if I take the term apart, remember, oma means a, uh, uh, a mass, a tumor. In this case, a hematoma would be a blood tumor. It literally translates to. Um, remember, we talked about the layers of the meninges, right? So uh, the, right on the most exterior, right under the skull, you've got your dura mater. So if I've got a subdural hematoma, I've got a blood collection right underneath that. Um, an epidural would be a, a, on, top, on top of it. So you can get subdural hematomas and an uh, epidural hematoma. Down at the bottom on 137, I want you to take a look at the term hemiplegia. Hemi means one side of the body is paralyzed. Okay. Usually caused by a cerebrovascular accident. Remember, CVA is a stroke uh, or a brain lesion. Sometimes uh, tumors can cause, cause this as well. On 138, figure 4-5, uh, you can see the thyroid gland. Thyroid glands right up in the uh, neck area, you, right behind your uh, thyroid cartilage, which is your Adam's apple. Okay. Uh, 139 up at the top, I want you to look at uh, figure 4-6. Okay. And it gives you a uh, description here uh, by means of drawings of uh, different types of cells. So we, we're, we have pictured here normal cells. Okay. Uh, then we've got something called hyperplasia. Hyperplasia means that uh, there's an overgrowth of cells. Hypertrophy simply means the cells are bigger than normal, as opposed to then atrophy, which the cells then become smaller. So we've got normal, hyperplasia, hypertrophy, the cells uh, don't increase in number, they're just bigger, and then atrophy, uh, they're smaller. Take a look at 140. Uh, figure 4a talks about metastasis. Okay, so let's note the difference between a primary breast cancer and breast cancer that has metastasized to the lung. So in the case of metastases, what is metastases? It means it's a spreading of uh, the cancerous cells. You generally have a primary tumor, uh, cells break off, and then they move through uh, the lymphatics, they seed other organs, and then the cancer begins to grow there. We call this uh, metastatic cancer. Down at the bottom, malignant versus benign. So uh, it says the root IgN comes from the Latin IgNIS, meaning fire. So a malignant tumor is a cancerous growth that spreads like a wildfire from its original position to other organs, whereas a benign tumor, benign, uh, ben means good, is a non-cancerous growth that does not spread. Uh, here on 141, we've got an x-ray of the hand. Uh, it's showing you the uh, metacarpals, uh, meta meaning in the, in the middle. So you got your carpals, and then you got your phalanges, which are fingers, and then in the middle kind of are the metacarpals. At the bottom of 141, it lists different types of intensive uh, care units. So you've got the MICU, or the NICU, which is the medical intensive care unit. Uh, the MSICU, uh, which is the Medical Surgical Intensive Care Unit. The PACU, PACU is the Post Anesthesia Care Unit. PICU is the Pediatric or Psychiatric Intensive Care Unit. And the SICU is the uh, Surgical Intensive Care Unit. So you'll see these when you're rotating through your uh, clinical rotations, these different uh, types of intensive care units. On page 142, figure 410 is showing you uh, neonates there. Uh, the term neonates, uh, usually uh, they're in incubators um, for warmth. Uh, 143 is showing you the position of the parathyroid glands, the parathyroid glands. 
Down at the bottom on 143, polyuria and diuretics. It says polyuria is the excretion of an abnormally large quantity of urine. Uh, diuretics are drugs that promote polyuria, like Lasix is a drug that's going to cause you to urinate more. And they use, uh, they use these a lot in the treatment of uh, hypertension to lower the blood pressure. Let's take a look at 144. Uh, showing you a prolapse. So here we've got a, a cross section through the female here. Uh, notice in cross section going from anterior to posterior, we've got the uh, urinary bladder, then we've got the uterus, then we've got the rectum. It's showing you in A the normal presentation of the way that the uterus uh, should be. It kind of almost flips over the uh, bladder. And if you've got uterine prolapse, notice how it's moved out of its place. On 145, uh, showing you uh, joint replacements there. It's showing you that you can have the uh, hip replaced, uh, you can have the knee replaced, and then it's showing you then the hardware uh, that can be used. I want you to notice the term uh, on 145, exacerbation. Exacerbation. Exacerbation is an increase in the severity of a disease or any of its symptoms. So if we say that something is exacerbating, uh, it's, it's, it's basically getting worse. Uh, and 146, picture of the location of the uh, scapulae, which are your uh, shoulder bones. Top of 147 lists some common um, syndromes. Okay, so it's probably some of these you've heard of, maybe, maybe all of them. Uh, we've got AIDS, Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. We've got carpal tunnel syndrome, Downs syndrome, mitral valve prolapse syndrome, and then toxic shock syndrome. So I'd like you to read over those, look over the signs and the symptoms. Like I said, uh, you're probably familiar with uh, most, if not all of those. Under the term trans there, it lists again, the transurethral resection of the prostate gland. On 148, there's a picture of the uh, heart, okay, and then the uh, different valves uh, of the heart. There's also a tracing of the blood flow going from the inferior and superior vena cava into the right atrium. The blood milk goes from the uh, right atrium to the right ventricle. Uh, from there, then, we have to bring the blood uh, to the lungs. Um, and then we're going to bring the blood back to the left side of the heart, uh, left atrium, left ventricle, so it can be pumped out through the aorta. Um, but you can see on the right side, you've got the tricuspid valve. Why tri? It's got three valves. And then on the left side, we've got the mitral valve, which is also called the bicuspid. Uh, it's got two valves, or two flaps. And then at the bottom, it's showing you then um, an ultrasound of uh, a baby here. Uh, you can see with uh, today's uh, technology, we can get really good uh, detail uh, on sonography uh, of the baby's face, for example, as it's showing you there. The last thing that I'd like to take a, a look at um, is going to be um, on page 160. I always want to make sure that you know how to pronounce terms because obviously Part of medical terminology is the proper pronunciation of terms, um, as in, in addition to the, the spelling as well. So let's take a look at the terms. You just follow along. I'm going to say the terms for you so that you can hear them. So we've got abnormal, adrenal glands, analysis, anemia, antipartum, antibiotic, antigen, aphasia, apnea, atrophy, benign, bilateral, bradycardia, congenital anomaly, dialysis, diarrhea, dysphagia, dysplasia, dyspnea, dysuria, ectopic pregnancy, endocrine glands, 
endoscopy, epidural hematoma, excision, extrahepatic, hemigastrectomy, hemiplasia, hyperglycemia, hyperplasia, hypertension, hyperthyroidism, hypertrophy, hypoglycemia, incision, intervertebral, intrauterine, intravenous, malignant, metacarpal, metastasis, neonatal, neoplastic, paralysis, paraplegia, parathyroid glands, perianal, periosteum, polydipsia, polyneuropathy, polyuria, postmortem, postpartum, precancerous, prolapse, prosthesis, quadriplegia, relapse, remission, resection, retroperitoneal, subcostal, subcutaneous, subdural hematoma, subscapular, subtotal, syndrome, tachycardia, tachypnea, transabdominal, transurethral, tricuspid valve, ultrasonography, unilateral, and urinalysis. So these are the uh, terms uh, uh, that you should know. It says to write out then uh, the meanings of those. It gives you a few case studies I'd like you to look at uh, for within the text itself as well. So once again, if you have any questions at all, you know my email. Uh, you can email me and uh, I certainly will, will get back to you. Um, that's it for the chapter on prefixes.